I want to switch to another guy who is probably your favorite person in the entire world, and that is Ryan Day of Ohio State. So a little bit of nugget for you. Coach was actually at that game last week. He managed oh. to score tickets to the game. Awesome. And has not been the same since, and that is because Notre Dame lost in excruciating fashion, 17-14 at the end of the game. <laughs> Once again, while the game was fine, it was after that piqued my interest, and it was Ryan Day's comments when he was asked about the performance of his football team, and I don't have that clip here, but essentially, apparently, he took umbrage to something that Lou Holtz, of all people, said in the pregame lead-up to this. Now, you know how this works, man. Pundits, content creators like us, we say stuff, and... Does it really matter what we say? We all have opinions. At the end of the day, it's whatever happens on the football field. But I just kind of rolled my eyes super hard listening to Ryan Day talk about what Lou Holtz said. No, I get it. You stand up for your football team. But in my mind, he went so over the top talking about, is it Ohio versus the world and all this stuff? And I just had to ask myself, does this make people like me hate this team even more? And I think the answer to that is 100% yes. Yeah, so as I stated earlier, I am a Michigan fan, so the listeners can take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. So Lou Holtz, no. Lou Holtz called Ohio State soft, right? Yes. That's what he said. Lou Holtz coached Notre Dame. He, of I course, is going to come out on Notre Dame's side in this discussion or whatever. Now, in a lounge chair. Yeah. Now, to be fair, I would take a 1,000 Ryan Days over one Lou Holtz. So when we're talking yes. about who I don't like in this discussion. It's definitely Lou Holtz 100%. over Ryan Day. But I do want to get something straight. Ohio State is pillow soft, soft, and they have been for a couple of years now. Just a couple, not not long. But for the last couple of years, they've been soft. They've had a hard time developing linemen either side of the ball. They get talented linemen to come there, so they're not bad, but they don't grow and get better while they're there. And that's because they have a soft program. And Ryan Day knows that if he gets trucked by Michigan for a third year in a row, he's getting fired. Yes, I, I wanted to bring that up with you because yeah. his speech and it, it seemed almost like fake intense to me. Now, maybe it wasn't, but it seemed fake intense. It seemed like I need to prove a point for my team that these people can't call my team soft. When in reality, and Coach has said this on this show before, every coach knows what they have in that locker room, every single one of them. So he yes. has to know what you know, that this team doesn't have the kind of to use a gorilla monsoon term, intestinal fortitude that it's going to take to win the national title against these other programs that 100% do. And just like we talked about with Colorado, you build your teams at the line. And whether they, I mean, they won this game on the line, right? Like that's how they won at the end of the game. But is it going to work against all these other teams, right? Is it going to work as they get forward? Is it going to work against Michigan? And that's the only game that matters, right? Yeah. It's the only game that matters. And he's staring at a three-game losing streak, and a lot of people, even Vegas, are picking Michigan to win that game. And he yeah. has to be thinking about that as he's saying this, right? This early in the season, he's got to be thinking about it. Yes, because he, this whole this whole tirade he went on in this post-game uh, on the field thing. So cheesy. If you look at it instead, if you view him as a politician trying to get elected, it makes a lot more sense. I'm your guy. The constituents should back me because I'm going to fight for you. That's, that's the case he's making. He's trying to make his case to why he should not be fired when he does get trucked by Michigan again because that is coming. Because Excellent what we, point. Yeah, because what we saw in this game again in the last couple games is that this team is not built to beat Michigan. This team is built to beat USC. Right, Notre it's Dame. built to beat teams like that. Right, it's not. It's not even really built to beat Notre Dame. Notre Dame. This goes best to seven if they play a series. Yes, right? it does. Obviously, Ohio State is capable of beating Michigan. Right, they're so talented, but they are soft, and their softness is why they've lost to Michigan two years in a row, and they lost by over twenty points both times. Ryan Day has two Big Ten losses in his entire time at Ohio State. If it comes three and it's Michigan, he's getting fired because they will not put up with that, and Mike Vrabel might be available. But they are not putting up with that. The other thing you mentioned is that, does this make you hate Ohio State even more? Well, for me, that's obviously impossible. It's already maximum level. I hate them too. But I do want to say, while Ohio State is easily one of the worst fan bases in the country, the like 10% of them that are good fans are some of the best fans. Yeah. Some of the best fans. Now, the rest are all just eating beef jerky, wearing at a hearty, horrible wannabe UFC guy. But the 10% that are great fans are some of the best fans you will find anywhere. Excellent point about the politician, that this is really politicking for his job. Because, I, again, as I'm watching this, I'm thinking, this can't be about what Lou Holtz said. I mean, I'm sure in some way it 
it did hit a nerve. But like Lou Holtz has been a senile old man for like 15 years. And that was when he was back on ESPN television doing college football coverage. So like, I I get it. Lou Holtz is, he's kind of like Joe Namath in that way. Like you're going to trot him out because he's a guy who has a pedigree. He's won at Notre Dame. He coached there. I mean, I get it, right? You do this all the time. You bring your stars out. WWE is notorious for this. Need a ratings bump? Let's get the rock out there. Yeah. And, but what Lou Holtz said, like, why do you care so much? Like why? And it felt so derivative. Like it just, it did not feel real in the sense like Ryan Day should, and and this is it, this is a good point. Ryan Day is soft himself if he's going to take something that Lou Holtz said so damn personally. Like he is representative of what you said about this team. And this video is going to go so viral because Ohio State fans are going to just dump all over us. And I'm here for all of it, all of it. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, I honestly don't care. Ryan Day is soft. That's why the team is soft now too because it's taking on, Right, Brady Hoke and Rich Rod Michigan teams were soft because the coaches yes. were soft. Right, that's that's the thing. They don't have a hard coach, and I am not looking forward to when Mike Vrabel becomes the head coach at Ohio State. That is going to be a nightmare as a Michigan fan. But in the meantime, they've got this guy who is soft and is easy to get run over. And yeah, I the Ohio State fans can uh, can come for me, especially online. It's fine. I'm, a lot of misspellings, I assume. So let me ask you this: a little bit of a tangent. What? makes a coach hard versus soft in your opinion and if you take that out of context that's just your own problem but my point being is like you talked about Mike Vrabel and Mike Vrabel being a coach that you're scared of and Ryan Day is not a coach that you're scared of despite the fact that I'm sure in his mind when he looks in the mirror he sees himself as what he looks like right even though he looks like he's constantly sunburned all the time that's just something I can't unsee but in your mind like what differentiates coaches when it comes to that kind of stuff because I would assume you would look at Deion Sanders and call him not a soft coach, right? No, not at all. Not at all. So it's, it's kind of hard to put into words. It's kind of like the Supreme court defining pornography. You know, you know, when you see it, like, right. If I say Brandon Staley's a soft coach, nobody's going to argue with me. We all know exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Um, And I think that it's more, I think that coaches that are, that are tough and create toughness, real authentic toughness within their teams are very incredibly authentic Somebody like Deion Sanders, somebody like Jim Harbaugh, somebody like Nick Saban, these people are all lunatics, but they are authentically crazy in the way that they're crazy, right? Bill Parcells, you know, these people are the real deal in how in how they are. And I feel like other some coaches are trying to do impressions of that when it comes to creating toughness, and it's never going to work. You know, all football coaches preach toughness. Right. It's Always. an important part of football. They're all going to say we need it. We need to do it or whatever. But if you're not actually about it, it's not going to work for you. And your players can see that, too. Like yes. your players know if you're faking it to make it. And that's just that that sums up exactly what I felt like watching that is yeah. that he felt like he was faking it. And I don't I don't know who he was trying to impress or who he was trying to convince. And very clearly, it's the Ohio State Board of Directors because he wants to keep his job. Yes. Let me ask you, though. If he loses to Michigan and, like last year, makes the playoff and ends up going to the national title game or even, hell, winning the national title, does that save his job? If he wins the national championship, it saves his job. If they go to the playoff, they won't play Michigan in the first round because they won't rematch the first round. If they make the national title game and lose a rematch to Michigan, now he's got oh four God. in a row. He's he's ultra-fired. Oh, yeah. So, right. So, but but they're not they're not going to the playoff this year if they, if they – if they lose to Michigan, first of all, Michigan's not going to be their first loss this year. They're they're going to stumble somewhere else to a team that they probably shouldn't, or they're just going to lose to Penn State, who's capable of beating them as well. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to look at them this year and be like, this team deserves to get in over some other conference conference champion. That's a good point. Well, Dave, I mean, these two coaches couldn't be any different, and I feel like one of them is going to be a head coach next year, and the other one is not. 